a long way down the track. The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Thank, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to speak once again on this. And I've just gone through to um, expose what is a very, very important part of this, and it relates to changes to the has-no legislation. Um, and again, not having the full background of it, I'm skipping through this, trying to bring myself up to speed. And in, in um, clause 140 here, or, or it's not 140, it's actually under, let me go back, page 1558, I'm thinking to those. Um, subject to, it's, it's re, in regard regulations, and there'll be some, probably in the Green Party, might want to pick their ears up to this, subject to section 141, the Governor General may from time to time by order and council make regulations for one or more of the following purposes. Oh, yeah. A. Prescribing organisms as genetically modified organisms for the purposes of this Act. Prescribing organisms as organisms that are not genetically mod modified for the purposes of the Act. The point is that, that in dealing with health and safety, this legislation deals with the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and it has no legislation, and, and some of which I'm quite familiar with as a poisonberry grower. Um, I deal with quite a few chemicals that... I have to say, I don't like touching. I use gloves and, and all the methods uh, advised um, to make sure that I don't come into contact with it. That for anyone who would be working with me or for me, uh, that is a high risk situation. Because while there are warnings that actually you can't see unless you've got a microscope, I have to say, uh, on the packages for the most part, most of them are known as ecotoxic and are things that you want to avoid or contact with. They are, un whether we like it or not, part of the horticultural system. And if used correctly, they are fine. But there is a risk in, in working with them. And this, this um, piece of the, the legislation deals with that, trying to minimise the potential harm from that contact. But in 140 here, um, as I say, 289, section 140, that's the regulations replaced with, um, these regulations that, that refer directly to genetically modified organisms. And I have to say that there, there's a move afoot across the country, across the economy, and the new national um, environmental standards for, uh, for production forestry uh, includes reference to genetically modified uh, trees, presuming they are trees anyway, um, and, and certainly imposes restrictions on local councils, many of whom are, are up in arms about it. The point being that there is a move to push down that pathway. Now, in the absence of any comprehensive discussion, I think it's irresponsible. <coughs> Absolutely. So what we've got here is the passage of legislation under health and safety, and, and we know the connection with Pike River, but, but very quietly, we've got reference here to another significant area of importance for our economy, and that is GMOs, genetically modified organisms. The fact that our economy relies on a biological production system means that if we do move into this area, um, then, then there are significant implications for companies, for sectors, for the country in terms of our branding. And I'm wanting to ask the um, minister, or he, if he, she can give an assurance that we're not moving one step further down the path to easing access for GMOs, because alongside that open um, exposure through the National Environmental Standards of Forestry, there's a lot of subversive and, and not so subversive activity from the likes of Federated Farmers and others who are saying Actually, genetic engineering is quite a complex science, which I agree with and can partly understand. Uh, and actually, GM is not GM in, oft, in many cases. The point being that there's, there are those who think that's going to be the salvation of the primary production sector and are pushing more down that path without any consideration for the branding issues. And that person over there should know as a farmer. He should know better. Um, that, that we do not want to end up in a cul-de-sac where where our high quality, safe, high value production systems are undermined by what may be a perception of us changing into a new production system. The point being is that the regulations, as amended, as referred to, and as prescribed here, 
in this legislation are maybe, I don't know, um, opening the door for GE and GMO. And Mr. Mr. Chairman? I call Jamie Lee Ross. I move that the question be now put.